ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this first Total War Live of 2021. And we are here with the announcement of Ajax and Diomedes. I am streaming from home today because I am working from home, no longer in the office. And unfortunately, that means that we are unable to have any developers with us on this announcement stream. Normally, we would have a developer with us to uh, take us through some of the details, really give you the information that I am normally unable to give. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to be able to tell you anything, though. See, I've done my homework. See, I have in my tome of knowledge, and it's, it's an actual tome of knowledge, I have all the information that I need to be able to give you the lowdown on Ajax and Diomedes. We're going to talk about pretty much everything that is coming in the DLC and the free DLC today, but we won't go into the nitty gritty details of everything. Then next week, we're going to start streaming and on Wednesday next week, we're starting off with Ajax in campaign. So make sure that you tune in for that on Wednesday next week, twitch.tv slash Total War and YouTube Total War Live. This is the, uh, uh, the faction pack, which is focusing on the uh, Greek mythical heroes, Ajax and Diomedes. Uh, Ajax the Great specifically. They're, it's a little bit confusing because there was an Ajax the Lesser as well, but we are focusing on Ajax the Great and Diomedes of Argos. They are two of the greatest warriors of the Achaeans, generally thought to be only second to Achilles, but since Achilles and Ajax and Diomedes never fought, we don't actually know who's the strongest fighter. So we have a new type of unit, Paragon units, which are available to both uh, Diomedes and Ajax, though through very different ways in their uh, campaign mechanics. And we'll get into that as we talk about each of the factions on their own. Um, both heroes also have had a focus on mechanics for them to sort of end wars early and dictate the terms of war so that uh, you you not, don't necessarily have to fight a war forever. You're going to be able to do a lot of in interesting diplomacy stuff with these new mechanics. So here we have Ajax himself. Great hulking man. You can see that he's massive compared to Menelaus and Odysseus. You know, just a giant of a man. Except, you know, he's, he's not a giant. Or is he? As you can see, uh, Ajax has a big old honking shield. And that sort of ties into his entire thing. He's a very defensive guy. And as I continue talking about this, you'll see more and more um, that he is really, really defensive in style, but still very strong. So normally he would be referred to as Ajax the Great, but in our story, in Total War Saga Troy, uh, we start before Ajax has truly become great. And his entire deal is to become the greatest, um, which ties into one of his mechanics uh, or one of his resources, Renown. So let's uh, let's load into um, a game I have here um, on turn 24. Defines a guy who doesn't wear armor. Look, you gotta show off them pecs. So we can see here that we've got uh, Ajax here. Um, we've also got his brother Toaster here as a secondary army that I just recruited for the fun of it. Um, and we've got the island of Salamis here. I'm going to turn this around so we're facing north. Let's talk about uh, Ajax's first unique mechanic, which is the path to greatness. So Ajax wants to uh, uh, prove himself a great warrior, uh, greatest warrior, perhaps even. And that, uh, through that, he wants to basically show how great of a fighter is. And if we've taken this in-game, to uh, uh, sort of challenge other um, other great warriors, other great commanders in battle. Now, the, through the Path of Greatness, you can challenge various uh, commanders. We can see three of them here uh, to a friendly battle, friendly competition. Um, this means that you get a fight available to you, um, which is a friendly battle you are not going to be taking permanent losses. Even if everyone dies, you are not lose, actually losing any of the uh, units that you've got. If you are to win, you will come out the, the, the combat unscathed because it's just a friendly skirmish, you know, it's, it's a mock battle, so to say. And you will get access to a new type of unit, the Paragon units. They are sort of a, a slightly different version of a unit that is already in the game. 
So visually, they are going to look mostly the same, but they are going to be led by a commander. So if we were to challenge Elias here, he would be the commander of this Paragon unit. To, to challenge these, uh, the, these commanders, you need to have accumulated a certain amount of renown. Renown is a unique resource for Ajax. The higher your renown is, the, the more impressive of a person you are. You are becoming closer to becoming Ajax the Great until you max out renown and then you are Ajax the Great. You know, if, if I want to, you know, practice some battle, I'm not going to practice against some scrub. I want to practice against the, the, someone who's really, really good. So you have to prove yourself before you can challenge some people. There are some ways, some different ways that you get, get renown, but one of the uh, primary ways is through the second mechanics, Warrior of Renown. You can see here that I have, uh, my, my total renown is not very high in this game so far, um, but what I have is plus five to diplomatic relations with the Danans. So the Danans are gonna like me better. And as uh, Renown goes up, people are going to think I'm more and more impressive, they're going to like me more, and that's how we're going to get through this. Um, however, that's not the only thing. As you can see, I have Renown missions. Now, these are our unique missions to Ajax, which are dynamically created. So, whenever a, an ally of Ajax loses a battle, you're going to see a Renown mission coming up. It's, it's basically like Ajax saying, hey, those people over there beat up my friend. I'm going to go beat them up. And that's sort of the idea of renowned missions. So it's you helping out your friends, your friends being like, oh my God, this guy is amazing. And then you, uh, you get more renowned, more people like you and so on and so forth. This sort of snowballs. Now, if we look to the left side here, you can see that we have some interesting stuff here. We can select a celebration prize. We can invite guests. What's going on here? That's, it's very strange. So what we can do is to uh, basically call a celebration with uh, 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 those around us. And if you were paying attention earlier, I, in this game, am at war with Athenia, but I can still invite them to a celebration. And so what you can do is you can host a celebration where you're basically uh, uh, mending bridges and you're calling a peace between you and whoever you're fighting. And it's, it's not just uh, your, whoever you're fighting. As you can see here, I could invite Mycini, who's a very good friend of mine. Um, and uh, in this celebration, what you're doing is that you're giving away ancillaries that you have to basically men, uh, men fences. Ajax, shield wielder, he has a, uh, a spear. He is personified by that great big shield that he has going on. And so he is a defender with a bit of fighter thrown in, but primarily defender. Um, as you level him up in campaign, his skill tree gives you the choices between uh, going offensive or defensive. Another part of uh, Ajax's skill tree is that it ties in with the new god Hephaestus. So we can we can click on Divine Will here, and we can see that we have Hephaestus here. Um, I've leveled uh, uh, up Hephaestus here on the, the side. I'm not going to show you all the bonuses, but Hephaestus is really focused on uh, uh, it's not really focused at all, actually. Uh, Hephaestus gives both uh, in battle and campaign bonuses. It's more about uh, um, because Hephaestus is the, the 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 blacksmith of the gods, so to say. Um, Hephaestus is more about uh, leveling up the equipment of your units, making great buildings, and all of those kinds of things. So we've actually brought back um, equipment levels from uh, Total War Rome 2. So with Hephaestus, which is free to everyone, you're gonna be able to do some interesting stuff with equipment and Ajax's skill tree ties in with Hephaestus nicely as well. If you wanna, if you wanna go with Hephaestus, maybe you're an Ares person, you wanna go with Ares, just beat people up, that's fine. Or maybe you're all about love, Aphrodite. So uh, Hephaestus comes with a new agent. Um, the, 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 uh, the, the Caberos, I want to say is how you pronounce it, the Caber in mythology, the Caberos are, uh, sort of divine smiths, or divine, uh, um, craftsmen. What they do is that they tend to improve everything, so what they can do is that they can go to a, uh, a settlement and permanently improve that settlement. Um, it will, it will, uh, uh mean that they stay that forever, um, some, th there are other um, agents in, say, um, 
uh, Total War Warhammer 2, uh, which worked like that, where you take an agent somewhere and they um, uh, you, you expend them by getting a permanent bonus. Same works for the Cabe the Cabiros, the Cabiros. Man, the, it, it, there, there's a folly in trying to properly pronounce ancient Greek, isn't there? Because it's literally ancient. They can head to a settlement and permanently improve it, um, or you can embed them into an army and get uh, uh, upgrades to the equipment for the units in your army, or you can head over and uh, do some uh, sabotage towards uh, um, unfriendly, uh, um, unfriendly armies, which will give them massive penalties like the equivalent of minus 10 motivation. It's it's huge. Uh, we I think we spent enough time on Ajax the Great, so let's hop over to um, Diomedes then. So Diomedes is the king of Argus. He is young, like probably easily way younger than any of the other uh, heroes that we have in A Total War Saga Troy. The thing is, he's young, but he's extremely experienced. He's already been leading armies for quite a while. So he's the king of Argus, and he, his entire thing is that he wants to avenge the death of his father. His father died at the gates of Thebes. And so uh, taking Thebes, avenging his father, and even surpassing his father is a great uh, um, ambition for Diomedes. It both Diomedes and Ajax have access to Paragon units. However, as you saw in uh, Ajax's case, those were gotten by challenging great military leaders and getting them to join you effectively. Um, so here we have the first mechanic, Argos Finest. So, as opposed to challenging a commander and getting them to join you, Argos Finest allows you to train up your own Paragons. So what you do is that you select your unit type on the left here, the trainee unit. You then select a strategio, Strategos. The Strategos will then train the army to, uh, um, to, to become a Paragon unit. So as opposed to uh, Ajax who just gets people to join him, Diomedes makes sure that his Paragons are trained from the bottom up. Strategos? Strategos? It's all ancient Greek to me, man. <laughs> cool. We currently have two Strategos available to us, um, but there's a scroll bar here. This list is, is fairly long. Um, you can gain various different Strategos uh, throughout your campaign, and you do that by basically going, o going over and taking over their home. Basically, the city where they live in, if you control it, they will be available to you uh, to train your units. The different Strategos will give different bonuses, and they also take different amount of time to train up uh, Paragons. So uh, one may be focused on increasing the, um, the defense of a unit, while one and other might be uh, uh, focused on the armor piercing, or the normal damage, or the speed, or something else. And you have to uh, select your Strategos carefully when selecting your Paragons. Um, because you don't want you don't want to end up with you know like oh spears with great armor that's like young spears with great armor that's that's not gonna work out that's not what you want you, you want them to be fast in and out stab some people get out of there cool so let's talk about Diomedes' second mechanic which is master strategist I so who is um, for the I said at the beginning of the stream that both of the new factions have a way of sort of increasing the diplomacy and ending wars early. Now, Ajax basically calls celebration and says, hey, let's be friends. Diomedes does this in a much more aggressive way because he is really the sword to Ajax's shield. So, as you uh, uh, go through the game and complete various object objectives, you will get dominance. Dominus is a unique resource for Diomedes, which you can use in Diplomacy. So, we can see here uh, that I'm fighting the Corinthians in this, uh, in, in this fight, and I will get a bunch of Dominus by completing these objectives. These are not the only objectives that exist, uh, these are just the objectives I have available to me at this time. So, as I complete these objectives, I will get Dominus. Now, I can use Dominus 
to assert my dominance <laughs> in diplomacy. So what I can do is, when I get enough dominance, is to go into diplomacy and say, hey, let's end this war. Click the dominance button, you get a huge bonus to uh, your enemy's uh, willingness to say yes to anything. So what you can do is just go, hey, I've beaten you up a bunch, you're weak now. Much weaker than me. Let's end this, but also I want you to give me this, this settlement. I want you to give me something because I beat you. It's not just gonna end the war, you're gonna take a bunch of stuff. They're 100% gonna accept it. So what it does, so if you're familiar with how uh, diplomacy works in Three Kingdoms and in Total War Saga Troy, um, it works on a, a balance system, right? So it's like, all right, well, I, I, I'm gonna give you a thousand woods, a thousand woods, a thousand wood, and you give me 50 uh, gold. And there's gonna be a, a, a number that says whether or not they will accept that. What dominance does is that it gives a massive boost to that number so that you can basically make th uh, deals that are more favorable to you. Let's talk about Diomedes on the battlefield. Diomedes is a fighter with uh, a little bit of defensive added in there, but primarily fighter and you're gonna see that in his skill tree as well. Uh, his units are focused on hard hitting and shock infantry. So as opposed to Ajax, who's all about the de defense, uh, Diomedes is all about the offense. You, you want to run in, do some damage, maybe get out, uh, recuperate, get back in, do some damage. Uh, he's also got a very varied infantry. He's got early access to swords. Uh, I don't have any in my army here. But uh, you, can, you can get access to, to swords much earlier than some other uh, factions. And you get access to multiple types of axe units. However, to make up for that, uh, Diomedes does not have great missile units. Um, he, his, some of his units also have uh, a trait that as they get damaged, they will start to get weaker. Now, what this means in combat is that missiles will be very dangerous to Diomedes. You need to definitely deal with missiles quickly, as quickly as possible when fighting as Diomedes. Because if, uh, if some of your units start getting weaker because they've taken damage, uh, you're going to have a bad time. So deal with the missile units. Alright. Um, so, I believe I have uh, exhausted my book, of, or my tome of knowledge. But if you have any questions about Ajax and Diomedes, um, and I can answer them, I will do so now. I'm gonna head over back to this camera. Whee! Can you show the new units on the battlefield? Not today. We're gonna show them on Wednesday. What about the Palladium? The Palladium is going to be in the game, yes. It is coming with the DLC, um, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna tell you how. But the Palladium will be available to all uh, Danan factions, I believe, um, as a special thing. Any new battle maps or settlements with the DLC? Uh, yes, there is a new battle map, uh, a unique battle map for the city of Thebes, because Thebes is very important to Diomedes. It shows up in... Um, uh, Diomedes' epic quest chain, so um, we decided that Thebes was very important and important enough to get a unique battle map. Alright, I think that's where I'm gonna end this stream today. I know it's... I hope that you will join me on Wednesday at 3pm GMT, because then we're gonna be playing Ajax the Great.